Hello again. Some time since I last did anything about reloading, so this time I'm going to do something about lubricizers. This is a lubricizer. This one is RCPS. Similar ones are made by Lyman, Star, and Seiko. And they all work on the same principle, which basically uses a hydraulic piston here to force lubricant into the die and then into the grooves of the bullet. Now these things work very well in warm weather but what tends to happen when the weather gets colder is that the lube is too thick and stiff to easily pass into the die and turning this handle to produce the pressure becomes quite difficult. So now you can buy a heating pad, an electrically heating pad which bolts underneath the lubricizer and keeps the whole thing warm. And I was going to buy one of these, but I found that in the UK they cost £73. So I'm now looking for a cheaper way of, of doing this. And what I intend to use is this, which is uh, a ceramic and uh, cotton fibre heating element. It runs from between 5 and 12 volts and is said to produce enough uh, heat to be able to uh, heat up my lubricizer. So let's uh, get on and see what we can do. This is the heating element I bought uh, from eBay, of course. It's um, 5 by 10 centimeters, which seems to be about the smallest one you can get. And it cost me the princely sum of four pounds. The first thing you notice is that the heating element is bigger than the footprint of the lubricizer so you can't bolt straight down through this or you'll damage it of course so what I plan to do is mount the lubricizer on a piece of aluminium this is a piece of scrap which uh, explains why it has so many holes in it mount it uh, on there so that it can be bolted to the aluminium and then put a couple of clearance holes through there clear of this heater so that I can bolt the whole assembly down to the reloading bench. I'm going to mount my lubricizer back on this full length aluminium plate on which the various loading presses and so on are bolted. So in order to do that I need to drill a couple of holes and tap them for these 8mm bolts. <clears throat> now if like me you can't uh, use a hand drill to drill a vertical hole very easily here's a good tip for you. What I've done is instead of drilling these two clearance holes for the 8mm bolts in the upper plate I've just drilled them to the tapping hole size which is the hole that needs to be in this bottom plate then by clamping the plate together I can use this top one as a drilling guide so that I can keep my drill more or less vertical like so Then of course I will need to draw these out for clearance hole sizes. You're going to need a power supply of uh, between 5 and 12 volts and maybe up to 1 amp. Now I bought this one which is switch mode supply and it's variable between 5 and 12 volts. And the only reason I bought that really is that I've no idea how warm this, this thing is going to get. So. I intend to try it at a variety of different voltages to see which is best. But if any, if you like me, you'll have lots of these sort of things lying around, old phone chargers, MP3 chargers and so on. So 
once I've figured out which voltage will give me the sort of warmth I need, I'll let you know and then maybe you can sort out um, your own charger at less cost. This cost um, about £5.50 I believe. And in order to get an easy termination to this, I also bought one of these, which is uh, a screw terminal to conventional coax plug, the sort of plug you'll find on the end of any charger that you have lying around. Now one thing that I have to do, and you probably won't unless you've got a metal bench as well, is to put some sort of insulation on here because I don't want the pad to heat up the whole of this bench, just the local area. So I've made um, an insulating gasket uh, out of a piece of floor tile. That will go on there like so. And this goes on position near the front. Like that. And this will go on the top and hold everything together while I put the screws in. One. There's the other. Okay. Tighten those down. I'm not going to really tighten them down hard because I don't really want to crush the heating element any more than I need to. That should do. Now on top the precisor. Making sure the bolts aren't so long that they go right through the plate and damage the heater. There we go. I'll take, take this off before I damage myself with it. Okay, so we're now ready to connect up and try it out. I've had it running on 9 volts for a couple of hours now and it's only about 45 degrees in the workshop anyway so it's not really a very good test. But the block is warm to the touch, it's not hot but then I wouldn't expect it to be at that power. But it seems to be working as a loop resizer. Just to give it a try. Get that one in there. Yep, that's filled the bullet very well. No problems there so far. So what I'll do, I'll keep an eye on it and through the winter I'll let you know how it gets on when it gets a bit colder and the temperature in the workshop drops. But uh, at the moment it's looking fairly promising.